Mercury, interestingly, has been known to be a neurotoxin, has been known to be harmful to people since the first century, which I just think is crazy. There really is a movement globally to try to control this uh, pollutant, to reduce it, because it affects people in a number of ways, um, particularly when people are developing, so childhood, when you're in the womb, in, in utero. Um, it affects IQ, it affects cognitive development, um, so that's a main issue. And the other thing is that there's certain communities who are acutely exposed to mercury because of their diet. So they eat um, fish that are high in mercury content, top predators like tuna, they eat seals or whale, and that puts them over limits of the amount of mercury that you should have uh, on a daily basis to avoid cognitive or developmental or neurological effects. So that's another big issue. And finally, um, in acute cases, certain poisoning cases, like the very famous Minamata disease case, there are really high concentrations which cause people to develop a disease that's neurological, has seizures and tremors, ataxia, inability to walk straight, um, and that's a really horrible disease. Uh, and that has that really shone the light internationally, beginning in the 50s and 60s, that you know this was an important issue to work on. So the Mercury game is a negotiation simulation, or just a negotiation game, and the idea is particularly to get science students to grapple with negotiation and policy, to think not just about the science that they're doing in terms of how does mercury affect people, how do we understand how mercury deposits globally, um, but also what does that mean politically, what does that mean in an international negotiating context. And the game is also designed for policy students or even policymakers themselves to look at science directly and think about how do scientific assessments interface with economic and political concerns. People come into the room, they get assigned a role. Um, the role has a set of confidential instructions which explain to them what country they're playing or what NGO or intergovernmental organization they're playing, what the position of that person is within their country, and then they get a set of general instructions which give an overview of the meetings. Finally, the real crux of the game is the International Mercury Assessment which is uh, basically a summary of the science on mercury, modeled after the real global mercury assessment that the United Nations Environment Program produced in 2002. There is something to be gained by pretending that to going into a role and seeing life through that perspective changes how you yourself think. We want people in, not just to learn about the science or about the policy or even about how hard it is, but to really think about, well, what does this country think about the problem and why? And and understand that science and policy is really coming out of a particular frame and lens and that that happens because of national circumstances or because of individuals. So countries vary with their risks from mercury. It's one thing to read a document, to read an article, to go to class and discuss it. It's quite another to have to represent that viewpoint. And psychological research has shown that when people have to represent a viewpoint, it actually changes the way they think. So I think it's a really uh, powerful learning tool.